In yesterday's video, we discussed the vote that was held in the House of Commons. That emergency motion passed, granting MPs control over the parliamentary timetable on Wednesday. With this power, MPs used the time to debate a bill which would legally prevent Boris Johnson's government from pursuing a no-deal Brexit. In today's video, we're going to analyse that debate, the results and what this means for Brexit going forward. Before we do that though, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. All of this Brexit chaos has been bringing in a bunch of new people to our channel, so if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd really appreciate it. We regularly cover issues related to Brexit as well as UK, European and global news. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, hit click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time we release a video. So before we get into what MPs discussed and how they voted, let's briefly explain what's happening here. As I said at the top, a number of MPs are attempting to stop the government from letting the UK leave the EU without a deal. To do that, they're attempting to pass the Ben Bill. It had its second and third readings in the House of Commons yesterday, which means that it's passing quickly through Parliament. However, Johnson is days away from shutting Parliament down until mid-October, so MPs need to act fast if they want to get this done. So what's actually in the Ben Bill? Well, the bill requires the government to do one of two things. Either reach a deal with the EU by the 19th of October, or get Parliament's approval for a no deal by the 19th of October. If the Prime Minister fails to do one of these things, the bill would require the government to request an extension from the EU, with the bill suggesting the new deadline becomes January 2020. However, ultimately it will be the EU who choose the new date, with the Commons approving the date that the EU picks. Unsurprisingly, Johnson's government aren't a fan of this. They say that it limits them too much in negotiations, with Johnson saying that it could cut the legs out from underneath the UK's negotiating position. Because of that, he's nicknamed the bill the Surrender Bill. He believes that through negotiations, his government can reach a deal. But MPs seem less sure of this, and think that blocking a no deal is a good precaution to stop Johnson from going too far. Johnson's government disliked this measure so much that they removed the whip from 21 MPs who voted to progress it on Tuesday night, essentially kicking them out of the Conservative Party. Before doing this, Johnson's party already didn't have a majority in the House of Commons. After this, they're significantly short of a majority. So what happened when this controversial bill made it to the House of Commons yesterday afternoon? Well, Hillary Benn, who the bill is named after, started the debate by explaining what the bill would do. It's very important to understand that the bill allows the Prime Minister the opportunity to reach a new agreement with the European Union at the European Council and to seek Parliament's consent. It also allows the government to bring a motion to the House of Commons to seek our consent for leaving without a deal. And if either of those conditions is met, then there can be no further extension. If, however, neither of these conditions have been met by the 19th of October, chosen the day very deliberately, it is the day after the conclusion of the European Council, then the Prime Minister must ask the EU for a further extension until the 31st of January 2020. Now, it has been wrongly claimed in some commentary yeah that the EU could propose an extension of any length, six months, 20 years, a millennium, and the Prime Minister would be required to accept it. Not so. In those circumstances, the House could decide. Philip Hammond, former Chancellor under Theresa May, who found himself kicked out of the Conservative Party on Tuesday, spoke to the House to defend the bill and debunk a couple of misconceptions. I want simply to focus on two claims that are made against Conservative supporters of this bill, or former Conservative supporters of this bill, by the Government and seek to rebut them. Presumably these claims have been made as a justification for the mass purge that occurred last night. The first claim is that by removing the threat of no deal on the 31st of October, we are cutting the legs from under the Government in its negotiations with the EU. That is wrong. It's wrong because actually there is no negotiation going on with the EU. We've had confirmation from multiple sources across the European Union that nothing uh, is happening. Confirmation from within government. Nothing that we are doing here is going to undermine the Prime Minister's ability to negotiate. The thing that will undermine it is his unwillingness to pursue a realistic negotiating objective. Yeah. The second claim that is made against us is that by supporting this bill, 
we are handing power to the Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, I would sooner boil my head than hand power to the Leader uh, of the Opposition. Thank you. Uh, Sir Nicholas Soames. I rise to support this bill, but before I do so, I want to make clear that I have always believed that the referendum result must be honoured, and indeed I have voted for the withdrawal agreement on every occasion that has been presented to the House, yeah, yeah. which is more than can be said for my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, yeah. the Leader of the House, and other members of the Cabinet yeah. whose serial disloyalty has been such an inspiration to so many of us. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I think history, I think history will, in due course, favour the view that a threat to commit an act of self-harm if your counterparts in a negotiation do not do exactly as you wish, is not exactly likely to be an effective or successful negotiating strategy. Mr Speaker, the bill before the House today merely seeks to avert the immediate risks of the disaster of a no-Brexit exit on the 31st of October, and it thereby seeks to give the Government and this House a further opportunity to achieve a resolution of this profoundly difficult issue. Then it came to the vote on the bill's second reading. If you're confused by the series of readings, committees and the ping-ponging a bill does before its passage, we have a video about how bills are passed down below. Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 329. The nose to the left, 300. So the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Unlock! Order! So the bill passed onto its second reading by some margin. There was one new Tory rebel, Dame Caroline Spellman, but one report suggests that unlike other rebels, this won't threaten her career as a Conservative MP. After this vote, a number of amendments were proposed, and one managed to pass, the Kinnock Amendment, but this happened under very strange circumstances. The House divided for a vote, and MPs went to the voting lobbies as normal. Division, clear the lobbies. But then a few minutes later, the vote was cancelled, as there weren't any tellers, the MPs who count the votes in the no lobby. Order! Division off. <laughs> the division is now off. Fantastic. This meant that by default the amendment passed. This is highly unusual, with the BBC's Laura Kunzberg commenting that the amendment seems to have passed by mistake, adding that things were getting very odd. SNP politician Owen Thompson responded, saying that it was very likely a deliberate move by the government. Regardless, the amendment passed, and it means that if Johnson were forced to ask for an extension, then the official government policy becomes that he is asking for an extension in order to pass May's deal. As The Guardian puts it, effectively that means that any Brexit delay wouldn't be a blind delay. It would be a delay to enable a version of May's deal to go through. As James Forsyth from The Spectator commented, this means that the deal got further after this amendment than it did at any point when May was actually in office. Then, after being amended, the bill moved on to its third and final reading in the House of Commons. Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 298. The nose to the left, 56. The eyes have it. The bill passed this round by 28 votes, one less than the second reading. This means that the bill had now passed through the Commons, but it wasn't a done deal yet. It still had to make it through the Lords in time. As we mentioned in previous videos, the Lords doesn't have the same filibuster rules as the Commons, meaning that Lords are more able to debate legislation endlessly. Some are concerned that pro-Brexit Lords would do exactly that, running down the clock until prorogation and never passing the bill. While debate did go on long into the night, at around 1.30am, Peers agreed to a business motion which states that the bill will be returned to the House of Commons by 5pm Friday. My Lords, there have voted content 64 not content 242, so the not contents have it. My Lords, uh, I'm pleased to say we've uh, concluded our usual channels conversations and subject to confirmation by the Leader of the Opposition, we have agreed that the current business of the House motion will be adjourned today and a new motion will be tabled tomorrow to allow the Bill to complete all stages in this House by 5pm on Friday the 6th of September. This effectively rules out a potential filibuster, with a commitment to get the bill back to the Commons on time. Once returned to the Commons, MPs will vote one last time on the bill on Monday, before being sent for royal assent and passed into law. This means that the bill is all but a done deal, with the Commons almost certain to pass the bill into law at the first opportunity on Monday.
Another big vote also happened last night when Johnson proposed a general election, and MPs voted against the idea. We'll be discussing that in detail in the latest episode of our podcast, Too Long Didn't Read, set to release at around 1pm today. Find the podcast on YouTube or in your favourite podcast app, there's links to both in the description. We'll continue to keep you updated on this bill, the possibility of an election and everything else, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also, you can hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. And if you want to find more from TLDR, you can find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name at the end of the videos, just like these people, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.